What's up guys? Today we're going to be changing the front brake pads and the front rotors on this 2013 ML350. Um, I went with Zimmerman, Zimmerman Z-plated and I went with Eggbono um, ceramic brake pads. If you're having a problem getting your lug nuts off, here's a trick that'll always help. Now I know you may have tried impact wrenches and high impact wrenches and if they're not working, very simple. Get yourself some of this uh, this penetrating oil, spray it all over the lug nuts, soak them in it, uh, let them sit there for about a couple hours, hour. Then you can go to Harbor Freight and get the biggest breaker bar they have. It's a lifetime guaranteed. And then pick yourself up this deep impact socket. This is a 17 millimeter deep impact socket. You just put all your weight on the end of that bar and they will come off absolutely no problem. Check this out. Step it on the end of it. And done. It just smoothly come down. That's it. So you took all the lug nuts off and your tire's not coming off. It's actually fused to the hub. Um, no problem at all. So what you want to do is you want to get a, a hammer like this or a big hammer. And you want to hit the tire. You do not want to hit the rim. But you want to hit the inside. I'll show you now. Hit the inside of the tire and it just pops right off. That's that. Okay, before we start, I, this just pops off. I always like to just uh, just pop open the reservoir for the brake, brake fluid this way, just in case any pressure builds up when you're uh, squeezing the calipers and the pistons. All right, now that the wheel is off, step one, you want to get rid of this. You want to take this T30 fastener out. It's a set screw for the rotor. So basically, I hit it with some penetrating oil just to loosen it up a little bit. So I just stripped the screw, the T30 screw. Uh, it's very commonly stripped. So I went to um, went to Mercedes and picked up another one. And I'm just gonna drill this out right now. And it'll come right out. I'll drill right into the hub and it should pop right out. All right. I just made it right through the hub. You can feel it. You'll know when you, you hit the hub. Just be careful. Don't cross through the hub. I mean, just don't drill into the hub thread but uh it's pretty pretty fairly easy just keep it in the center step two we got to take off this anti-rattle spring and basically we're going to take a screwdriver and just pry it pry this up and twist it and just keep keep a pair of pliers on it because it will go flying and uh use eye protection use a pair of pliers on it you'll be fine now i'm going to take this screwdriver or you can use a crowbar and gently pry the brake pad off the rotor. So what we're doing is we're retracting the piston so we'll be able to pull the caliber off once we take the screws out. So just be gentle with that. Pull it back a little bit, just pry it back. Just a little bit, that's all you need just to get over the lip, that's it. So let me walk you to the back here and you'll see two caps, one here and one down here as well. So you're just gonna pop these off. You can use a screwdriver and they should just pop right off. There's one, and there's the other. That's it. And inside, you'll see two, two bolts, and they're going to be 11 millimeter hex. Just unscrew those and take those out. It's easy to use a 11 millimeter hex on a breaker bar, small breaker bar but just to give it that little torque that you need. All right, yeah. So just start off with a breaker bar and then you can just switch to a ratchet. Now the bottom bolt, bam, broke it, easy. Okay, on the caliper, just pull the, the wear sensor off. Pull it right out of there, you need to go. Okay, perfect. So now I'm just gonna grab a bungee I'm gonna grab a bungee, I'm gonna hang it over here and connect it to the, the caliper once I remove it so I can hang it so it doesn't fall and damage it or damage the brake line or anything like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the caliper off where the brake pads just fell. So now I'm gonna grab it and I don't wanna damage this line here, the brake line. So I'm gonna hang it from this using the bungee, but I need two hands. So I uh, just loop it through, just loop it through here and over the either coil spring Okay, so once we prop it up here, we're going to use our caliper tool. We're going to push the pistons in even further. We're going to flush them, working them back and forth, side to side, 
until these pistons are flushed. Okay, so we walked those pistons all the way back. They're pretty flush right now. Now I'm gonna take this brake pad off and hang it up on the bungee. Okay, so now that I have two hands, I just hung the bungee and the caliper here and I tied it over here. And also, when I remove this brake pad, very simple, these just pop out of here. You know, all you gotta do is just pull, pull slightly like this and it comes right out. It should pop right out. Okay, so now it's time to remove the caliper bolts. They're back here. They are 21 millimeter. Um, you'll find the top one here and the bottom one here. Uh, so I use a breaker bar again because there is Loctite on these bolts and they're really tough to get out at first. And actually, uh, dude, they're gonna feel like you're cross-threading the whole time, but you're not, believe me. It's just because there's Loctite on there and it's really, it's not gonna be smooth coming out, but you'll get them out. They say not to reuse these, but if they look good, uh, you can reuse them. Just put a little Loctite on there uh, just so they don't go anywhere. So I've got my, I've got my 21 millimeter on there. If you don't have a breaker bar, you're gonna struggle with these bolts, but I literally, um, I can just uh, yank up on it and it's good to go. And I'll just do the other the same way. All right, once you crack it loose with a breaker bar, you can just use a ratchet, it's pretty simple. Again, it's gonna feel like you're cross threading, but you're, you're not. There's Loctite on those bolts. All right, so once you take out both bolts, you can remove now we're going to go into the trunk and we're going to find the, the wheel kit, the spare tire, and inside the kit you're going to find a wheel hanger and you're just going to screw that in like this just because it's time to take off the rotor and we don't want the rotor falling out and damaging the floor or hitting us on the knee. That would hurt. So uh, we're going to screw the wheel hanger in slightly there and then we're just going to grab a hammer. And we're just gonna bang around the rotor and it might take a few times cause it's pretty fused on there, but it'll pop off the hub. By the way, guys, have something underneath that cause it's gonna make a mess if you don't want a mess on the floor. All right, there you go. I finally got it. I right, you just slide it off now. Now you want to just uh, clean off your caliper here and the contact plugs. Actually, clean the whole thing. Uh, so next, put some anti-seize compound all over the hub. Uh, all right, spread it all around it like that. Beautiful. So now we put the new rotor on, the rotor replacement. So we're going to take our new bolt the new T30 bolt, and we're gonna put it right, you'll see the recessed, the recessed hole there. Uh, you can line that up perfectly. I use the wheel hanger again, just to stabilize it. And then I'm gonna put a little um, a thread lock on the bolt. It comes with it, but I put a little bit more on. Just put a little bit more on there like this. And then I'm gonna just uh, thread it through. So it's time to put the caliper back on. I'm gonna put some lube on the contact parts and uh, I cleaned, I brushed it off and now I'm gonna just lube it up. Just so we don't get any uh, squeaking. So all the contact parts, I just put a little lube on, I'll rub it on. All right, perfect. So I lubed up the contact parts. Now let's put it back. All right, so I clean up these bolts, they look good. And I put a little lock, uh, thread lock on there, and now we're gonna put the bracket, we're gonna put the caliper right back on. All right. 
So connect these bolts back on, top and bottom. Okay, so we're gonna pop the wear sensor right on this pad. Um, so we're gonna make sure it clicks down into here, put it through the opening here, and then we're gonna make sure so it goes through here like this. Then we're gonna slide these down into the pistons. It should pop right in. There. Might you might need two hands for that. Okay, so your inner pad's on. Now we're gonna put the outer pad. So we'll just place that in there. That'll be placed right on the rotor. I'm gonna grab the caliper and I'm gonna put it on the rotor. So now we're gonna just slide it over like this. And these pins should be ready to be pushed in. Actually, uh, we'll take those pins out. We'll clean them off. Just make sure there's no buildup on there. Uh, and they don't need any grease at all, these pins. And then we'll use our 11 millimeter hex and we'll, we'll push them in. All right, so that's lining up there. And as soon as we're done with the top one, to the bottom as well. Once you're done with the 11 millimeter hex, let's put these caps back on here, on the top and on the bottom as well. Okay, so now it's time to put the wear sensor lead back in. So we'll just, uh, just push it right through in like that. And it should be perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna put the anti-rattle back on. All right, perfect. That's back on. All right, let's put the wheel back on. Okay, after you're done, let's make sure you close the top on the brake fluid reservoir and put the top back on. All right, you're all set. Make sure you start the car and pump the brakes a few times to get that fluid flowing back in there. And initially when you drive the car, you're gonna notice the brakes are grinding a little bit, but uh, drive it around the block a few times and after that you'll be right as rain.